What's good, everybody? Welcome to another exciting episode of Full Circle. I'm your host, as always, Odo Harmon Jr. Please feel free to find me at Odo Harmon Jr. on all your favorite social media websites. And people, Pokemon Month rolls on. Yes, yes, the whole month. All podcasts, all things Pokemon. I understand that February was supposed to be Elden Ring and Horizon and all that good stuff. And it will be. It, it will be. We'll talk about all that stuff. Probably not because it would be March and new stuff will happen. But I don't <laughs> care. Pokemon Month. We've had new guests, new exciting things. And if you wasn't here for it, I feel so sorry for you. But we got a new guest today. And I'm really excited because this man knows his Pokemon knowledge. If you like Pokemon and you're on Twitter, you've probably seen his hot takes, spicy posts, and just all around fun Pokemon good stuff and you know video game things all around. But Taco, welcome to Full Circle Podcast. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing good. I'm excited. I'm very excited actually. I'm oh, stoked. Man. Oh man. That yeah, there we go. Stoked. That's a word I haven't heard in a while. That's how I know it's real. <laughs> That's how I know it's real. Well, Taco, before we get started real quick, just in case people at home don't know, who are you and what do you do? Uh, well, that's, I don't know. <laughs> My name is Taco, and I'm on Twitter mostly. That's probably where, if you've heard of me, that's probably where you've seen me. Um, I'm a pixel artist, a uh, game dev, um, and I stream and, like, once a year make a YouTube video. Um <laughs> If you know me, though, mostly it's either through Pokemon or, like, some dumb joke tweet that I made for, like, a, some video game event at some point. Um, but I don't know what the word would be for the, all of that combined. I'm, I'm an internet person, I guess. <laughs> you know, you know, it's um, crazy that you say that because I remember... So I started going to video game comms, the E3 packs and all that, uh, circa 2014... Like, that's when I first uh, started going, and then it became, like, a yearly thing for me, yada, yada, yada. And it was, I want to say 2019. It might have happened in 2018, but definitely 2019 uh, at PAX. So, you always had, um, you had media badges, you know, mm -hmm. uh, four-day weekend badges, however many days it was, you know, Monday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And you had exhibitor and special guests. Exhibitor, you know, exhibitor. Special guests is, like, maybe someone's doing a panel, and, you know, this person is an exhibitor, but they need to show up to the panel. They're going to, you know, talk about something, yada, yada, yada. But then, just recently, before the world shut down, you started to see influencer badges. And it would blow my mind because I'm like, you think they would just naturally fall into the media category. But no, yeah. there was a whole subsect. You're not a special guest. You're not an exhibitor. You're not with the media. You're an influencer. And I was like, this is insane. Like... I don't even know what criteria you have to fall in under this or why you wouldn't naturally fall in the media category. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so I feel like internet person is now like a legit title. It's oh, like, I, yeah, oh, definitely. Um, man, I remember, I think influencers, the difference was that they couldn't do like the behind the scenes stuff, but they got in free, like a media badge. I think oh, that was the difference is that it, like, I think if you're just like a, uh, I don't know what a, the con goer version. The, the, there's like a paid for version that you can pay to get into E3, right? Um, so it's like they have the same restrictions as if you paid for it. Because that's like you have the most restrictions. You can do the least if you paid for it. Um, they have the most restrictions, but they get it for free. Uh -huh. I think that was the difference. Mm, that, that would make sense. I could see that. Like you're not, you're not, you can't go behind doors. You're not under any embargoes, but yes. you're here. Yes. And, and maybe, you know, you have some type of early access or like, yes, you know, you can get to the area with the free water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought you could have. Huh? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And I, and I just remember because um, I remember uh, I was waiting in line to get my media badge and this person like they uh, like the person at the desk was confused, too, about like what this was. And like I was just, you know, side listening and I saw their badge and it was like influencer and i'm like huh you know but it's at, at the same time i wouldn't be surprised if it had more power than a media badge yeah I'm, there's gonna be headed. some you know vip thing that media isn't cool enough to get into right <laughs> but media or uh influencers do for sure i i i believe that 100 percent. yeah so what i'm hearing is when the world opens up again and i'm like in like you know the nobody line and i wave mm -hmm. at you 
you'll be like, yeah, yeah, he's cool. You can get it. <laughs> <laughs> and vice versa. I, I got you. <laughs> I've got I've gotten in only through media and students. So I've never been. I don't because I don't think they count Twitter as like influencer. I don't think influencers count Twitter as an influencer. Well, I, I don't know because like I say, it's new. Like it's only. It was 2019 and maybe 2018, but I know 2017 not for sure. So, yeah. if we, since we can't really count 2020, 20, it's only I've only seen it for you know the past two years, quote unquote. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, plus, you I'm, know, those terms change as time goes on, anyway. Yeah. yeah, the internet's weird, man. It's going so fast. It it's going so fast. Things, I think back, and you know, I'll I'll bring up a tweet just because it's relevant to talk about um, that I tweeted not too long ago, and it'll say that it happened either like in the last year or so, or way longer than I thought it would. But my sense of time of like how f- fast things have progressed or how slow things have progressed is just all super skewed. Um, internet, I think it's because you know we're all on the internet a heck of a lot more in the last two years, so I think it's just like turbo speed, you know. Oh yeah, de- definitely. When the when the world when the world's like back to quote unquote normal and everything opens up again, I'm curious to see how it's all gonna pan out. Like, yeah. Do we know how to talk to each other anymore? You know what yeah. I mean? Like, like do we know like you know that that invisible distance of you know how close you can be to someone without making them uncomfortable, like just <laughs> talking to them. I wonder if that's like extended. You know, like. <laughs> weird and, stuff like that you know and even in even in our game space some people came to prominence because of you know the pandemic and being locked down and we have so i'm like when the world opens up and people have to legit go to things again to whatever capacity i wonder how many people will it will be like a, a reverse effect like oh well like people fall off now because you know you're expected to be at things or yeah like if you live in you know a small town in colorado you know or something like that and like the the tournaments in la in person you know like how would you yeah i bet a lot of people will roll reverse i guess you know, know. but they pokemon can't be pokemon sure yeah okay <laughs> but pokemon why you're right. all Sorry. <laughs> not 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 our our commentary on the dystopian future we currently yeah. find ourselves in so That's why you're the host <laughs> yeah i can talk about anything forever <laughs> So, people, you're probably wondering at this point, you know, we had our big Pokey Spectacular for the 25th last year, and we had all those great guests, and we talked about many things, and this year, we're keeping it rolling, you're like, Odell, what could you talk about now? What 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 possible aspect of Pokemon could you talk about now? I mean, you brought on Taco, I know he's cool, he's like a game dev and a pixel artist, I mean, would it have to do with something about design? Because, wait, wait, <laughs> is it design? Yes, it is design, people. <laughs> so, this week... I want to dive into something about Pokemon that is really, in its essence, like the core of everything, even the games. It's design. And when I mean design, design specifically of the Pokemon, it's the one thing every generation we're looking forward to is going to be a buzz topic. Regardless how good a game is, regardless how structured and balanced and amazing the world is, we're all going to be talking about what do the Pokemon look like. Are they trash or not? (laughs) <laughs> which the fifth generation showed us is a literal thing it can be <laughs> trash which ironically enough i don't like garbador but i think trump is just adorable somehow trump is awesome yeah like i i don't know how they did it and so we're going to be talking about the evolution design from the first generation all the way up to the eighth generation and of course you know legends people because now we get to see them in their full 3d real size glory which i've been Solely missing and talk. I'm gonna put you right on the spot and say, "What generation do you think has the best design?" Yes, I did not prep you with this question, people. This is honest gut response. If you're if you're a video watcher, you are seeing the pain in his face. All your <laughs> listeners, you are missing out. I uh, well, so it's it's not a surprising answer, but it's an answer that I think will make my opinions from here on out sound worse <laughs> um but my favorite generation of pokemon is the first one like i they're iconic i like like every single one of them a lot um pikachu I don't, if you're a, if you're watching the video there's pikachu's surrounding me you know <laughs> there's you know i'm a bit biased um but i like you know i like all i like pokemon from all generations you know just because I like the first one doesn't mean the rest of them I think are bad or I don't like them or, 
you know yamper is awesome <laughs> i love yamper you know stuff like that so that's my answer that's fair that's fair you know Sometimes I always tell people if you grew up with the originals, like if you were there for it, there's always something that's in- inexplainable about it. It's like Star Wars. Like I wasn't born in 1983. When I mm-hmm. first came across Star Wars, it was, you know, years after the movies had been out. And it's like I hear people talk about like going to the premiere in there. And it's like <laughs> it's just something you can't explain. Just just have to yeah. be there, as they Imagine. say. And uh, so, yeah, first first generation, completely acceptable answer. Um, I'm going to go with. So like the first will be my cop out, but I I told myself I'll I'll give it a little more thought, and mm-hmm. I'm gonna go with Sun and Moon, which is far from my favorite game, mm-hmm. but I don't know the designs in Sun and Moon are all just kind of they they were surprisingly good for for a generation game I didn't like I was like Serena I like that Mimikyu I also like that Mimikyu is I have. Top you can't tier. See them up. Yeah, there. I have a few Mimikyu's up way up there. I have Mimikyu's awesome. Yeah, I mean, it, like you know, Pikachu, but you know. Whatever. No, okay. <laughs> this is what I said about Mimikyu. There's a lot of Pikachu clones, and I think more or less they all suck. Token tomorrow, <laughs> he gets he he gets he's a, he's okay. I, I he gets a pass, but like Plusle, Minin, uh, Dendene, Dendene, me. I don't know how to say it either. <laughs> yeah. I tried. No, you're fine. I I I I struggle with that Pokemon's name so often. Yeah, uh, Pachirisu. I'm, I'm just... But Mimikyu, there's there's just something that works there. That Mimikyu... The yeah. You know, you know I'm, not a fan, I'm not a fan of Rowlet, but I have to admit his god-tier design. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How has that not been thought of before? I mean, like, obviously, there's been owls with bow ties. You know, like, that's not new. But Rowlet's perfect. Yeah, and then um, I I can go on. The point is, like when I think about Sun and Moon, I I'm like I didn't like that game, but I'm like, but damn, did it just have just a lot of well designed Pokemon? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So so there Starters we go. Are perfect. Yeah. And okay, and, and you know what's funny because it as much as I am praising it, it has the greatest single blight on Pokemon's history from design for me. I hate the Ultra Beasts. And and I get it. They're technically not Pokemon. Technically, these are not Pokemon. These are beings from a different dimension. Think... Go ahead, go ahead. No, keep keep going, yeah. keep going. I'm just processing. But, but I just really don't like any of their designs. And the fact that they're broken, like competitively, just upsets me even more. It's just like I I, I don't know. It's it, it's I, I get it. They're meant to be alien. I, I well, get that, it. Yeah, yeah. I would say that's why I like them. I like them because I don't, if that makes <laughs> sense. They 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 are very, you know, in a design sense, even not Pokemon, right? Like yeah. they're very you know, a different genre of monster design than the rest of Pokemon. But that's to me, that's like I, I think I, I think I really appreciate the um the I don't know how to explain this. The the dynamic of certain Pokemon. Some some Pokemon are, are great because they're ugly. You know, like they're just so ugly. You know, like we need ugly Pokemon. We need <laughs> cute Pokemon. You know, it makes the the ugly ones make the cute ones better, right? So like the Ultra Beasts being because you know, uh I think it's LGM and forget the first one, or if it's the second one, the aliens. Those look like Pokemon and they're aliens. Yeah. So the Ultra Beasts are aliens, but they actually look alien to Pokemon, if that makes sense. Yeah. So in that sense, big fan, but I, I get it. I, I, you know, there's one that's, you know, what, Lincoln Logs stacked on top of each other, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, like what, stack a lack or something? Like yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I appreciate the name. It's just like, it's, yeah. it's, it's enough on the nose. I, I will say <laughs> the worst design Pokemon to me, and only because I feel like because what you said about the Ultra Beast makes sense. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, time and thought went into it. But I feel like Meltan and Mel Metal, one, they don't have a generation. Two, I think someone from Niantic had to design that. Because I feel like Mel, Meltan and Metal just don't fit with anything in Pokemon. Even even if you just say it's an Ultra Beast, which I don't think it is. It's just a... I, a, I don't a, think it is, yeah. It's a Pokemon without a home. It's still just like... I, I think it, it's... So this is this is uh it's never been confirmed, but the fact that it hasn't been confirmed, I think, is what makes me think it is this. I think it is a Pokemon Go Pokemon. 
right? So, yeah. like, it's home. So, in the games, they treat Pokemon Go. They don't. They don't. They don't. They don't recognize Pokemon Go, but they recognize what Pokemon Go is, which is like real life. Mm-hmm. So, if you like look at the Dex entries of Mel Metal, I think they 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 mention a distant land where someone confused Mel Metal for a Cyclops or something like that, which is a reference to like you know here in real world, right? Stuff like that. Uh, I think I think it doesn't belong to a generation because it's like you know an IRL Pokemon, if that makes sense. It's the design contest winner Pokemon. <laughs> Yeah. I like I remember when it got leaked everyone thought it was a like a placeholder icon which <laughs> I can I get it I get what I you know like I'm like that's too designed for a placeholder icon but I get where you're coming from it looks like the well, like the uh when you have an icon on your computer and it's like the the street cone or whatever yeah it looks like that version of a pokemon right so I get where they're coming from. It has like a little wire on it for a tail that's broken, you know? But yeah. God, I get what you mean. Uh you know what you know, but Pokemon Go, you you're here to stay, and so is uh Melotan and <laughs> Mel Metal and that that atrocity. You know, I I I, I would have been cool like if it was just stripped from the decks. Like <laughs> like outside of <laughs> a Pokemon Go, it just didn't exist. But I'm pretty sure there's someone out there who likes it. So before we get to oh, some sure. of the nitty gritty, I'm curious from um, your standpoint, what what do you think? So you know, obviously, you know, you know, Pokemon, the Pokemon Company, uh, Game Freak has a team that you know every generation, they they whatever the rules are, you know, this was makes a Pokemon, this is wasn't make a Pokemon, you know, of course it doesn't fit within this narrative that mm-hmm. you know. Uh, it's not a Pokemon, blah, blah, blah. But from a design standpoint, what do you think makes Pokemon so endearing when you compare it to other things that has monsters? Like, you know, every Pokemon is iconic in a sense <laughs> oh, that, it is, yeah. yeah, not in a sense that not every Digimon is iconic. There's thousands of Digimon. Actually, I don't know what the number, but there's, there's a lot. But, yeah. you know, but for the most part, people only really know a handful, either from the anime or like from a game. But, mm-hmm. you know, not not every Digimon is someone's favorite. In the case, every Pokemon is someone's favorite. Yeah. And mm-hmm. if you think of any, like, Monster Rancher or Monster Hunter, there's always monsters that, that you know, are just, you know, nah, this is a bad thing that you kill, and that's it. And, you know, no one really loves it. Where do you think Pokemon comes in where it made, des- from a design standpoint, that made every single creature that's ever been considered a Pokemon have someone endear and just love it to death? And multiple people, you know? I think... So I, I I don't have I don't have a direct answer to this, but I have thought about it a lot. Um, I think at first they just, you know, through skill, obviously. But at first, I think they just lucked out, right? <laughs> you know, early, like, because you know you can't make a Pokemon happen. If that was true, everyone would have their own Pokemon that sells, you know, bajillion dollars, right? So I think you know a little bit of luck, a little bit of skill when it first started. Yeah. Um, when you become the biggest IP on the planet, there has to be some luck involved. I feel you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I think that, you know, continued on for a bit, you know, because it's the same artists, you know, stuff like that. I think around somewhere between Gen 3, Gen 4, and then maybe a little bit after that, they got into a pipeline where they started, like, I don't know if they, like, train people or what. But I think, you know, after years of doing it, you get an eye for what's good design. I, I think most of, I think, like, Ken Sugimori and all of them still work there. So they, they recognize, you know, when a Pokemon is finally a Pokemon. Um, and, I, and I think an additional aspect to that is, from what I've they've talked about, they take their time. But it's also quick. It's, it's a little bit of both, right? Where they're pros at it. But being pros at it, it still takes them, like, three months to design a Pokemon, right? Mm -hmm. So, it's, they must have some, you know, I don't know, like, process, right? That's unique to them that is simultaneously slower than everyone else because they take their time. But also, they are the best, right? In a sense that, like, they are the most successful, like, monster creators, right? Yeah. Um, they're also the fastest, right? So I think it's just experience, really. Experience and then recognizing what you're doing correctly and then just, 
you know, add 25 years of experience to that. <laughs> you know, I, I really don't think there is any um, special sauce that's like, you know, luck based. I think at the beginning it was luck based, but I don't think there's any special sauce. I think it's just experience and training people. And, you know, um, I think it's also a little bit of like adding a lot of people's because they, they grab Pokemon ideas from literally anybody. Right, like programmers will be like, okay, I, I, we need a Pokemon that does this, right? So they'll take an idea, you know, like they have Pokemon designers that you know, like help cr- meld that idea into something else, right? Yeah. It's just a lot of trained creators and experience, I think. I mean, I guess that you know, ultimately, that's what it boils down to. Because I remember, um, Game Informer did an interview with a uh, James Turner, who was the mm-hmm. first Westerner to the, ever design a Pokemon. So shout out to mm-hmm. James, you know, breaking boundaries for us all over here on this side of the planet. <laughs> and I believe uh, he was the art director for Sword and Shield. Yep. And uh, yeah, and I don't know if he's gonna be you know for the next one. I don't know how that works. But uh, mm-hmm. I remember uh, in the interview he said that um the way the Pokemon Company does it, like their hiring process is like draw a Pokemon. You know, they're like right then. You know, you get like you know pen, paper, marker, whatever. And they tell you, draw a Pokemon right then and there. And based off what he would say, you know, he didn't go into greater detail, but it seemed mm-hmm. like if the team looks at it and goes, yeah, this, this, no, that's not the vision out. Or, you yeah. know, <laughs> you get, you, you get someone within the acceptable marks mm-hmm. and you're mm-hmm. good. But his, uh, his Pokemon that he designed was Vanillux, which I think mm-hmm. is insane. Cause I'm just like, Oh, <laughs> you, you would think that like the, 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 the Pokemon that got your job was literally the one that was the ice cream cone, but Hey, it, it passed the test. I mean, like, think of it this way. We all know what Vanillix looks like, or whatever. Vanillish, Vanillix, whichever the tiny one is. We all know yeah. what that looks like. Like, even if we don't like a Pokemon, we all know it's, like, burned into our brains. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. They're doing something successful, even when we don't like it, you know? Like, yeah. I don't know how Yeah, to from a design that. standpoint, they, 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 you know, uh, there was a research paper long ago about some people, but... Uh, I'll have to look it up, but I talked about it on the show before, like two, three years ago at this point. And they found out that like in your brain, like there's a section yeah. that, you know, that recognizes things, people, faces and stuff. And if you play Pokemon, never Pokemon, there's, there's something in your brain that's able to identify. That's not a Pokemon. That is a Pokemon. Meaning mm-hmm. if I showed you like a Tim Tim or a Digimon or something mm-hmm. from Monster Rancher, there's some, your brain, like Pokemon is such a visible recognizable thing that mm-hmm. your brain can literally distinguish not a Pokemon and Pokemon. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, you know, clearly, you know, they've done something right. And, you know, they keep doing something right. Yeah. I just, I just, no I, I, I wish I knew what it was. I'm pretty sure it's like under a vault, you know, guarded day and night. Uh, what, the, what the magic <laughs> formula is. Yeah. I was going to say like Mr. Krabs. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, it, it, I, I think it's wonderful. Like you said, I think maybe the first gen, you know, they just got lucky. Or maybe gen one and gen two, because a lot of gen two Pokemon were designed, you know, originally, but, you know, they couldn't fit in the game or, you know, they had, yeah. you know, so, you know, you know, at some point they kept going. But uh, I, I here, here, here is going to be, I'm going to ask you a spicy question. Okay. Ready. Maybe. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> From 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 uh from a design standpoint, what would you say is probably the worst design Pokemon and why? So, uh, we we know we've already said they're all good more or less. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, yeah. There's there's no such thing as an unloved Pokemon. Yeah. Before. Oh yeah. No, definitely. Um. Oh man, I have an answer to this. Uh, it's not coming to me. I've thought about this as well. I. It's not the worst designed but i think my this is not the answer that i'm that i wish i could give you because if i remember it i'll cut us off and you know i'll I'll mention it but please do probably my least favorite is oh man i don't remember its name uh the stonehenge pokemon no spass no it's from gen 8 oh oh the one oh oh yes the 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 one that's opposite of the penguin yeah, it's the uh, it has the DreamWorks sm- smirk on it. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I think you know. I that's just my least favorite Pokemon. So there's just an answer there. But I think even Stone Joiner. Yeah, there you yes, go. Yes. Um, I know a lot about Pokemon, but Pokemon names to this day, I cannot. You know, what are we at a thousand? I cannot remember literally everything. 
Um, I can picture them all in my head. Can't remember everyone's name to save my life. Um, Stonejourner is probably my least favorite because its face is stuck in an ex- in an expression, right? <laughs> And I think that's that aspect of it. I don't, that's like what that's what takes me out. I don't know. I don't know why. I mean, like Electrode's face is in an expression. Doesn't bother me. Um, but Stonejourner's face being stuck in a DreamWorks smirk for all of eternity. <laughs> just it's like that doesn't look like a Pokemon to me. Just specifically because of that. Like I've seen you know Pokemon shaped like other things. I've seen Pokemon shaped like an ice cream. Pokemon shaped like a trash bag, you know, but for some reason, the the permanent expression, as opposed to like sometimes it goes into that expression, you know? Gotcha. That's what takes me out. I think that's yeah, I think just the <laughs> this sounds stupid, but the unrealistic aspect of that is what bothers me most. Alright, so I'm about to blow your mind with something. Okay. So my for the long time, one of the Pokemon I thought was worse was uh, Heliophile. It's the normal no. electric thing from X and Y. It looks like a lizard. It's like yellow. It's a like lizard. The, like the Jurassic Park guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. For the you longest, know, like, well, that like squirts the the ink or what? Anyways, continue. <laughs> yes. So for the longest time, I hated him. He yeah. evolves into Heliolisk, which mm-hmm. which you know that that's the one that. It, he finally gets the neck thing, like you're saying, and he squirts the yeah. poison. And, yeah. Um, but yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the pre-evolved form, I didn't like it. And then, so, someone showed me an interesting fact once. The, they're from the PAX Pokemon League. That X and Y, apparently, take this with a grain of salt. I don't know how true this is. But X and Y, a lot of people were turned off by the Pokemon designs. For, for Not all of them, but, like, more mm-hmm. so than any other generation. And apparently some some guy figured it out is because for up until then, Pokemon for the most part had triangle shaped eyes. If you think back to the first generation, you know, Charizard, oh, Electro, <laughs> Voltorb, Rhydon, you know, they had the not angry, but they had the triangle sharp eyes. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about, yeah. And then X and Y was the first time where a lot of Pokemon that doesn't it was not true for all them, but a lot of Pokemon had oval, big, you know, shaped eyes for, you know, mm-hmm. expression. And it was it's jarring after j- being gener- you know subconsciously seeing Pokemon having triangle eyes. I have now big oval eyes, and it and it was upsetting to the palate. And I was like, I think that's it. I think yeah, yeah, I think yeah. Pokemon with googly eyes just 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 make you turn your nose. I'm like, what is this? I think that's happened multiple times. Uh. Where there's a design, like, philosophy change and, like, a maybe, like, an artist, uh, a different art direction, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I made a tweet a long time ago where I was like, I don't know when this took place, but the design philosophy between Gen 1 and Gen 4, um, something changed in between those two. Because I put, like, a Magmar next to a Magmordar, and Magmar has this, like, even though he's, like weird looking right <laughs> uh, magmar has like this almost like you could see like natural like body forms in it where like you know you could real you could realistically see where like organs and stuff would be right mm-hmm. and then magmortar is just like simple shapes he's like made out of simple shapes right so somewhere between gen 1 and gen 4 they really started making pokemon i think they've said it in an interview like almost like easier for kids to draw right mm. more distinct silhouettes simpler shapes you know ma- more round curves you know that kind of thing where um the the basic structure even if there's they're kind of complicated the basic structure of pokemon are simpler right and so i think talking about x and y i think someone made like a while ago like a like years ago a meme where they drew Gen 1 Pokemon in an X and Y style, and then X and Y Pokemon in a Gen 1 style. And you could really see, like, the distinct difference between, like, the simplistic... Simpler. I wouldn't say simplistic, because obviously Pokemon... Like, if they were simple, everyone would be able to make Pokemon. Um, The simpler design versus, like, the more, like, oh, this is a real animal. I mean, like, you know, air quotations, real animal. Um, And... Yeah, I think I think that kind of thing has happened before, for sure. 
Yeah, most definitely. You know, I think though with X and one specifically, I think there was an exodus from that design choice because I swear X and Y Pokemon look very X and Y ish. Oh yeah, oh yeah, they and definitely then, do. And you know, and that might honestly be a relate to because X and Y is the first game where we get like quote unquote fully realized three D models. You know, we yes. evolve from sprites, so I'm pretty yes. sure there was some the was like since they're not sprite based anymore, we gotta do something. Yeah. You know, quickly they 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 change their mind. I hope, or I don't know what happened. Maybe it's just game to game that the the philosophy is you know added upon. Mm. But it was interesting, and it, it kind of segues nice to my night. My my next point is a uh, Pokemon. You know, the evolution from two D sprites to three D models, and I'm excluding things like uh, Gala Darkness, uh, uh, Pokemon Stadium. I don't know. Yeah. I can't remember that because you know these are already based off the sprites designs. But now you know mm-hmm. we're gonna have designs that don't have anything to go off of, so it's different. And I remember, so for a long time, I love Cyndaquil to this day. You know, when, uh, yeah. when I saw him in uh, Legends, I was like, easy, done deal. But I always hated Typhlosion. Once they had a 3D model for him, I thought he looked cool in gold oh, and silver. Okay, yeah. Like, okay, I was yeah. like, oh, was yeah. Cool. But then once they made his 3D model look like a dog constantly in stand-up mode, I was like, I feel like Typhlosion was meant to be like Quilava on all fours. I can't prove yeah. that. Maybe, I mean, his, his, his silhouette and, I mean, his sprite in a Golden Silver is like, you know, in dramatic, you know, upside. But he's like in like an attacking stance, not like a at rest stance. I imagine at rest he would just be on all fours. But I remember seeing <laughs> Typhlosion in 3D for the first time and being like, this is not what I expected. Why aren't your flames there? Why are they only there yeah, when you flames. attack? Yeah. Cool, Lava's flames are always there. Maybe they're not. I don't know. But I just assumed they were. I can't, I, I just finished playing Legends. <clears throat> had a cool Lava. I couldn't tell you if they were on all the time or not. Um, I think... <laughs> I think it's... You know, it's the difference between a static image, right? Like a sprite. Or like the TCG with, you know, like uh, Typhlosion in it. Where, of course, they're going to put the flames, right? Yeah. But then, you know they follow through on their concepts, which is like that Typhlosion only does it when it's attacking. And then now it's in 3d. And so like, unless it's attacking the, the flames are off. I think that just is, you know, I think that wigged a lot of people out and I get it. You know, I, I, yeah, they're right. You know, it makes perfect sense to me that it would be jarring. In fact, I think I, you know, I, I agree. Like I get why they're off lore wise. Right. But, no, it's very jarring. I, <laughs> I, I get it. He, he looks like a like a like a colored in naked mole rat. It's like <laughs> you know. He, he, I don't know I how mean, you, yeah. yeah. Have you ever seen the pictures of like a shaven lion? Like when they, yeah. it's, it's like that. It's like yeah. no, there something is supposed to be here, and now that it's not, I don't know what this creature is. It's like, uh, oh man, there are jokes online about like, oh, no one would believe. Superman or Clark Kent wasn't Superman just because of glasses, and then they they show like a celebrity with and without glasses, and they're like, "Oh my god, it's a completely different person." You know, it's like that, but you know, without the flames, Typhlosion is significantly less cool. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and I, I I remember thinking uh, once we made that jump that you know I'm pretty sure there was other Pokemon that people thought and they saw like fully realized in like a 3D space and were like, "What is this? What's?" What what's one all fish Pokemon? I get there. There's no oh, yeah. solution, but I remember the fact that all fish Pokemon are just you know magical flying creatures now. Just always makes me laugh, especially like the bigger ones like Milotic, Milotic. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't I don't know why I said Milotic. I'm I probably because I make fun. Not, no it. judgment. <laughs> but uh, like Milotic, it's like this just looks like a I don't know what you are. You're like a uh. Gyarados is the only one that makes sense because Gyarados is literally like a flying water dragon. But everybody else is just like, what's going on here? I wish more Pokemon just flopped on the ground. You know? <laughs> right? Yeah. Yes, thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you. Uh, something just completely, completely unrelated. And I'll try to say it as fast as possible so I don't tangent too long. I was watching Coliseum and Golbat. Um, this is something that I think they actively avoided. Golbat doesn't fly unless he's like attacking. Um, instead, he has his wings wrapped around him, 
and he's like dancing right <laughs> and i'm like why i've always wondered why they did that and then it dawned on me the only times is not he's not like has his wings wrapped around him is when his mouth is open and i think they did that because i think golbat looks weird with his mouth closed <laughs> so they hide it by having his wings around him until he's like attacking and his gigantic mouth and like tongue come out right uh uh-huh. But I think they were just, I think in the same way that like Typhlosion would look weird without flames, I think <laughs> Golbat looks weird with his mouth closed. You don't think of it. Have you seen to, his mouth closed? To that, I say, I didn't know Golbat could close his mouth. Yeah, I exactly. Just, I just thought exactly. it was just permanently open. No, yeah, I, I never exactly. even thought about that. Yeah. What does it look like? You know, I'm sure there's like some like still frame of the anime where his mouth is closed for like a split second, but. <laughs> Yeah, have you ever seen one of his mouth closed? I haven't. <laughs> I, I, I have. Oh man, these, these are the answers we need, yeah. Pokemon. Okay. <laughs> like I just, you know, when it eats, it's just like, and yeah, I just I, like it falls in, you know. <laughs> yeah, like, like he, like his mouth makes the chewing motion, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. Just, these are the things that keep me up at night. You know, this this is honestly gonna keep me up at night. <laughs> you know, one of the things I always thought was weird is um, Pokemon size, which, you yeah. know, okay, I get well Lord. It's like a legit well, and yeah. you got to dumb it down. But yeah. in the game, well Lord introduces, Waylord is like le- significantly bigger sprite mm. than everything mm-hmm. else. I don't know if you can do that in 3D, but Pokemon that are small, like Flabebe, Joltik, I'm just like, mm. I refuse to believe there's a Pokemon that's only one inch tall. Like, you're telling me this Pokemon is, 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 is Jay Big? There's what no are they? They've got to have bugs, right? Yeah, I think there needs to be more one-inch tall Pokemon. You think there needs to be? <laughs> yeah, more. I was. I think I thought about this yes, literally yesterday. I was like, "What? Like, we have bugs everywhere. Like, what do they look like in the Pokemon world? Right? I guess maybe that's how like Ash can sleep comfortably on on the you know the in the open air in a sleeping bag. He doesn't have to worry about a bunch of little bugs getting on his face, you know." Yeah, you know, it's like that one of those things like, you know, we just assume they don't have, you know, farm animals or regular dogs. And it's, it's one of those things, you know, you just don't think about it. I think about it. <laughs> but, you know, uh, it, but OK, so here I call it the Alvin and the Chipmunk scenario. So Alvin and the Chipmunks, you know, originally, you know, in the 80s, 90s, they were like regular kid height. You know, they were like, you know, yeah. four foot tall or something. And, and you know. I don't see this uh-huh. unrealistic because they're they they're like multi platinum. So yeah, my disbelief is already out the window. Who cares yeah, how yeah, tall yeah, they yeah. are? <laughs> but when they did like the the modern movies and they were like regular chipmunk size, I was like, what is yeah. this? Okay, now this I have a problem with this. What is? Yeah, I, they're actual chipmunks. Like there's th- some disconnect. There's some disconnect between like you know like. Hollywood or whatever, whoever is working the 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 nebulous idea of people working in Hollywood, right? Yeah. Whoever's working there, I don't think they get that we believe these things as is, at like you know, like real, like the scary Sonic or whatever, right? Yeah. Like we don't need it to look real, you know. <laughs> we, it's a blue hedgehog. You don't have to go the extra mile, you know. We we've accepted it. We we yeah, accepted yeah, yeah. it long ago. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, I mean, it would just been like they were like. Well, hedgehogs aren't four foot tall. They're yeah, yeah. You know, like what's the line? <laughs> they 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 run on all fours and they're three inches. Like yeah. you, you know, I kind of want that now. I bet someone had to fight for them not to make it like a atomically like a correct thing. hedgehog. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Could you imagine? I'm unfortunately I am yes. <laughs> But yeah, no, I, I, okay, so my problem I have with Pokédex entries when it comes to size, mm-hmm. specifically with the small Pokémon, because big Pokémon, I think it's fine, you know, it's mm. seven foot tall, yeah, we know it's seven, but it's like, but I'm like, realistically, how could I catch something that's like smaller than a Pokéball? So, there's a, f- there's a, I mean, like, I, I, there's a few different answers, um, I don't know if they're real answers. Um, originally, the original lore, there's like, I have a, I don't know where it is, I have a book back there. It's in Japanese, so if I showed it to you, it wouldn't matter, <laughs> unless you speak Japanese. Um, the original Pokedex, like, book, physical that you could buy in a store, Pokedex, 
has the original lore of Pokemon. And Pokemon have the ability to shrink. Oh, no, not this. I hate when okay, so, Lavington said that in Legends. Yeah, and it's so funny because they brought it back in that. And I was like, oh, no, like people are not going to like this. <laughs> so there's that. Okay. But then there are like layers to it that don't add up. I think this is one of those things where it's like, this sounds fine 25 years ago. Now that we're like reconciling with it, it's like, well, that doesn't make sense, right? Um, where you know, like, what's the point of it? You know, it, originally they invented Pokeballs with technology. I'm like, well, what's the use of a Pokeball if Pokemon could already shrink, right? Yeah. So there's that in this cup. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Why do Why do I have to spend money on Pokeballs? You know, just you know, here's my hand cupped out like this. You know, that's good enough. You know, um. So there's, so, you know, I don't know if these are answers, but there's some stuff that doesn't totally add up. But then I was watching, it's called Pokemon Generations, and it's a, it's a bunch of shorts that came out, um, I think, in the last anniversary. Um, and there's one with uh, Deoxys. It's like my favorite one. <laughs> um, and I was re-watching it just because I was setting something up or whatever. And now knowing they brought back the whole Pokemon have the special ability to shrink aspect. Um, I was rewatching the Deoxys thing, and they mention the way they found out Deoxys was a Pokemon was that it could go into a Pokeball. So I'm like, <laughs> was it in that too? Where they're like, the differentiation between Pokemon and anything else is that it can shrink, right? I'm like, was that them talking about it then too? So like, I think they've just kept on that and then just not brought attention to it this entire time. Like, I mean, I don't know if that makes you feel better, but uh, that's no. the answer, right? You know, uh, if, if it's one of those things that turns out to be 100% true, they're just going to, you know, ride that out. I'm just going to be like, I, I just, I'm just going to. I'm just gonna be ignorant on that. Yeah, <laughs> it, it just, it just, it just makes you know. It'll be like in battle, I would just be like, "Oh no, that attack's gonna hit you." Well, just shrink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, like well, they have a move called minimize. I think we all collectively forgot that they have a move. Pokemon have a move called minimize. I don't know if you remember. Yeah, Gen where, 1, it's like a little dot. You know. Yeah, it makes you you know your evasiveness raises because you know you're you're well, smaller. That's what they're doing. They're they turning small. <laughs> <laughs> And then, and then, uh, you know, I mean, that's also weird. I mean, that also, I mean, that would also explain why other things can't go in a Pokeball. Cause you know, yeah, yeah, exactly. What, what does Deoxys going into a Pokeball have to do with anything? Like, how does that prove it's a Pokemon? Unless Pokemon can shrink, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, I mean, but you know what? I'm, I'm going to stop this conversation. People, <laughs> if y'all want to come online and, uh, uh, enter this uh, conversation, then, you know, but by all means, I, I will yeah. ignore you there. <laughs> but I'm just as confused as you guys are. <laughs> yeah, and so, uh, so again, uh, you know, Pokemon design has changed over the years, and you know, we got mm -hmm. 3D models, and we got to see Pokemon. And you know, I really thought Sword. It's weird because Sword and Shield was like the first time you could, be, not really, but kind of, be out in the open world with your Pokemon. Mm -hmm. As in, if if you can catch this Pokemon, then you can see it uh, atomically correct. Mm -hmm. Next mm -hmm. to you, air quotes for those uh, listening. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, our uh, legends, you know, now we're here. You know, I think this is the first time, correct me if I'm wrong, where we finally got to see Pokemon fully realized in a real space. I, like, without the exceptions of, like, Poke Park, and uh, there's got to be more examples than that. They use the same 3D models. Like, the spinoff games, a lot of them use the same 3D models. But this is definitely the first, like mainline pokemon game i don't know i don't know if this is the correct way to say it but like the world being kind of real time where like battles just happen you know uh you see the pokemon roaming around when you throw out your pokemon to like stand up in the middle of the field in pokemon legends like it's the first pokemon game to kind of contextualize everything right you're not going when you're battling a pokemon you're not going into some like alternate dimension <laughs> where you know what i mean like you know like the background yeah. changes it's like generic trees you know what i mean yeah like, and your your sprite now has some weight to it and... yeah yeah yeah, yeah. You, you don't go from this you know this tiny to like gigantic you know or like i guess not gigantic normal human sized right um so i think 
I think the key difference is everything is uniformly in the same space, right? So in that sense, yes, I think this is the this is the first time really we've seen that kind of thing. Yeah, because even in Sword and Shield, like uh, one, like your character walks like they just learned to walk two days ago, like. <laughs> I don't know what's up with that, but um, <laughs> strides. There, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, and um, you know, and we, and you know, you can. You, it's because, um, like, the, I don't know the right way to say this. Like, you can't really get close to a Pokemon in Sword and Shield because you know you'll enter, you know, alternate dimension mode. Oh yeah, yeah and then even yeah. and even when you do that, like, you're always at such a what I call like the acceptable wrong and right distance. Like, yeah. close enough to know that you're battling, but far enough to know that, like, your size doesn't really matter on what the Pokemon size. Like, they're only relative to each other, not to you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they are. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. And you, I know and, exactly. Go ahead. Yeah. And, and you know, and I remember uh, when I was playing Arceus for the first time, I had this thought. I was like, this can't be the first time I've ever seen Pokemon in at least video game be comparable to a real person but it just kind of feels like that for the reasons yeah. you said earlier that everything's just real time real space all the time yep, yep. i think i think you know like it's the topic that always comes up the graphics aren't great right yeah. but i think it's the cohesion of the world that's that makes it work you know like i think it's one of those games that if you haven't played it yet and you're watching a clip, it looks ugly. I, I think I posted a a, 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 a a tweet about that I was like playing with Tang Wild Tangela, right? Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, they're like they're playing or whatever, and everyone's like, what what are you talking about? The Tangela's just walking around with no emotion. I'm like, but if you're playing, you can if you're like the one playing the game, you can tell they're doing stuff different than every other Pokemon, and I think it's just that that context and cohesion that clicks right like it just it just works i don't i don't know how to explain it other, <laughs> outside of that but it just works yeah i, I mean i th i think it's right you're, you're right on that and uh because what, what i found cool is just like okay i throw out you know my typhlosion it's like oh yep. typhlosion is about as tall as me that tracks mm -hmm. it checks out yeah that makes sense and then it's like i throw out a bigger pokemon it's like Oh, Onyx. Onyx is actually, uh, I mean, it's really hard to say how tall it is because, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's like a giant rock snake so it can lay up and yeah. down. But, you know, yeah, yeah. it is appropriately taller than me. Yeah. And not only is it appropriately taller than me, it's taller than other Pokemon. Yeah. Which I think is the real key thing. Like you said, you you have Pokemon, the Pokemon reference and person, the Pokemon reference all at the same yeah. time. And it feels cool. Like, it just, like... I really, I don't think the mainline games would be Arceus. Um, I've already talked about this at, at, at Nauseam, but in terms of like a design model standpoint, I don't know. I don't think going forward, we can't have games where people in Pokemon aren't are the appropriate size. And, 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 I, and, there, and there's no Pokemon in this game that, you know, are, are the two inch tall varieties, but I'll be love to see how tall they make them. Will they be two inches or, you know, they up it up to like, you know, maybe like a foot to make it visible. Yeah. yeah. I think. Yeah, like uh, a Joltik or whatever. I'm excited for the day that I'm walking and I have no idea what I just battled. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, a hundred percent. There's a battle, you know. Um, I, I, I'm hoping. But he, here's the thing: they're very clearly supposed to be different types of games. You know, it has mm -hmm. the the subtitle Legends, or I don't know if you consider that a subtitle, but has the the extra Legends attached to Pokemon, right? Um, but there are so many aspects of Legends that I hope transfers over, like bleeds into the mainline. But, you know, how much can that happen? Sorry, they're both mainline, but the, yeah. the main generations, right? Yeah. I don't know how much that can happen while they're, you know, still distinct, right? You know, in my, you know. my, my, uh, I haven't said this. I've thought about this. I've talked mm -hmm. about it, like, not online or anything, but to just, like, friends. And I'm going to say it here for the first time. What I really feel is, okay, so I'm not a fan of Pokemon Go. It, mm. from for as a mobile game perfectly fine but i'm not a fan of pokemon go aspects in any of the mainline games mm -hmm. i was so upset 
uh, when Let's Go was first revealed, and I was like, no, Pokemon Go mechanics. Because, like, that <laughs> means they could be in, you know, quote unquote, the mainline generational mm-hmm. games. And then they made it there. But it took the form of like candies and some some other things. Not mm-hmm. nothing too jarring. Yeah. But I'm like, if Pokemon Go, which from like a, a purely game design standpoint, the worst Pokemon game, quote unquote, if aspects of that game could bleed into the mainline series, I don't see why Legends couldn't. It would almost feel oh, backwards to me. Yeah. I think it I think it absolutely will. Um this next one, whatever it is, um, Gen 9 or whatever, it won't be just like they overlap development so gen 9 started way before legends was finished right um there's no way the game can like shift complete focus and become a legends game right yeah um but in the same way let's go's like overworld pokemon walking around and stuff made it into sword and shield i think there will be some degree of bleed over from legends to generation nine i like there has to be i don't like i would be shocked if there wasn't so yeah i do think there will be some aspects that carry over to what extent i have no idea no clue i think i know the answer to this because i know you saw a tweet about it but was there any pokemon that you saw in the real world that you caught or just interacted with that you're like yes i've been waiting for this moment i've been waiting to interact with you in a real way like the do you mean like the like, are you like the size is because the, the thing I was the most excited about in the game was the size of the folk, the, the what are they called alphas or whatever? Yeah. Um, that part I hope carries over. Like we we have this thing like Pokemon come in sizes like this is a big boy versus a little yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah. That I hope car- that I that is the out of the entire everything in Legends. I mean, like if if the main if the the Generation Nine could just become Legends, I'd prefer that. But if I could pick one thing that I think is reasonable to expect, uh, expect to be in Gen Nine, I want the size difference. Because having a gigantic uh, ride on, like I, had a, I always get them mixed up. Having a gigantic ride on, like a big kaiju looking dude <laughs> hanging out with me, I want that so bad. I think that's so cool. You know, I thought the, one of the coolest aspects of the Pokédex when I was uh, filling it out is um. Even if you don't catch an alpha, it, it, the height goes, and this is how I think you fix the bug Pokemon. It'll be like 5'7 to like 5'12. Mm-hmm. Wait, that's just six feet. 5'7 to six feet. I'm sorry, <laughs> people. We don't use meters over here. I wish we did, but we don't. It'll make things easier. And um, and I was <laughs> like, that's cool because I guess it would be unrealistic to expect every Pokemon Charizard to be like 5'6. Every Charizard mm-hmm. on the planet to be 5'6. Mm-hmm. So I, I like that, you know, let's say, you know, the average height is this, give or take, three, four, five inches, what have you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, go ahead. Yeah, and I was like, could you imagine battling someone? And I I would say it wouldn't give any actual strategic difference, because I feel like if you did, it, it would open up a whole new can of worms for breeding and competitive battling that I don't want mm-hmm. to think about. But like, mm-hmm. you know, you have a mirror match, and like one Venusaur is bigger than the other Venusaur. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't want that, where it's, like, the bigger one is, like, more powerful, but the smaller one's faster or some degree of something like that. Yeah, I but just not. purely aesthetic, like, you could watch yeah. two people, but you'd be like, whoa, they're, they're the same Pokemon, but they're different sizes. You know, yeah. it doesn't have to be, like, crazy noticeable, but it's just, like, you know, kind of in a sense how, like, every spin does different. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I've wanted this kind of, like, small variety since Spinda. Probably even before that. I don't even remember from, like, the first season of Pokemon. They, like, find this Pikachu forest. And there's just, like, slightly different variations of Pikachu just hanging out everywhere. Yeah, like, 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 like the t- tough of hair yeah. and, like, not the yeah. tough of hair. And, you know. That kind of thing where, like, it doesn't matter for the gameplay, but it's like, oh, this is my Pikachu versus your Pikachu, right? Yeah. And they look just slightly different. I have wanted that forever. And the size thing works. It just... It just works. This is my gigantic ride on. This is my tiny pseudo Udo. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> hey, hey, you know, um, you know, even if it's not giant, like, could you could you imagine, like, you know, let's just say, like, they they probably wouldn't do alphas per se, but let's you know, they they do the size variation thing. <laughs> could you imagine you have your ride ons you're so proud of? It's like, yeah, you know, this is my uh, I don't know, ride ons average height, but just let's just let's just say six feet. You know, mm-hmm. this is like my six seven ride on. And then someone comes along with like a seven two ride on. You're like, yeah. What is this? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh man, I, I, 
that stuff works. I don't know. It sounds, you know, zooming out a little bit because, you know, like I'm a big Pokemon fan. This kind of stuff sounds so silly to people who don't necessarily enjoy Pokemon. They're like, oh, the coolest thing about this game is that you could catch big ones and that you can catch small ones. You know what I mean? Like, that's yeah. not, that sounds so silly. But it just, it's just like that weird, I think it's like, I, I compare it to um, pixel art in, in early Pokemon games where, yes, Pallet Town has three houses, but it feels bigger than that. You know, like Celadon City has four buildings but it feels bigger than that right yeah the 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 three sizes of pokemon you know small medium large is that kind of like it's just enough spice to make your imagination kind of fill in the gaps right like my small gengar feels like it has a different personality than my medium sized gengar right yeah it's it's just that simplistic touch that your brain fills in the rest. I think that's I think that's kind of what it is, why it works. Yeah, and I get you completely. Like, the same thing with genders. Like, okay, EVs are, like, 75% boys to 25% girls, something like yeah. that. And, like, I'm just like, I can only have a female Espeon. Espeon is yeah. a girl. Yeah. That's just that's just how that works. Yeah, yeah. And, and then, uh, and it, it's, it's weird because it's not, okay, so Espeon looks, you know, quote-unquote traditionally more feminine. Yeah. But there's other Pokemon that, for some reason, to me, canonically on my team are a boy and girl, like Vaporeon. I don't think Vaporeon looks... I think it's just a good... It could be either or. It looks fine. But, it, like, I want my Vaporeon to be a boy, despite yeah. it being a mermaid. I don't... I can't tell you why. And when I have a girl Vaporeon, I'm just like, no. Nah, you're a Vaporeon it, that's not mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. I Because there are Pokemon that, you know, wouldn't, you know, fit into the stereotype of girl or boy. Um, and spe or specifically, but I like sometimes having the opposite, right? Where it, it's just that small degree of, I don't know, customizing sounds like the incorrect word to describe it, but it's like that personalization of like who you are reflected kind of on the Pokemon you choose, mm -hmm. right? Um, this was the first game I had a girl haunter. I always have a boy haunter. This is the first game I had a girl haunter. I love my girl haunter. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, it's a lot of projecting, I guess, kind of, right? Like, you, it's these simple, because, you know, the gender, unless you have, like, a like a charm move or whatever, um, gender doesn't have anything to do with anything unless you're doing breeding or, like I said, like a, like a love-based move, right? Yeah. Um, but, it matters to people, right? Like, like it. It's a degree of personalization that just I don't know works. I guess even though it has no impact on almost anything except yeah. for breeding. Them. No, it, it's because uh. So I like to, I like to have my team's gender balance. Like mm -hmm. I don't like to be like like how can I have five boy Pokemon one girl Pokemon? It's not fair to her. Yeah, like one one she wants to like <laughs> gal power with like the girl Pokemon. Yeah, yeah, and and and, and like yeah, to to me that it 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 matters. It it just does. Yeah, and and there's certain Pokemon to where I feel like like so I had a competitive. Uh, I usually always make a competitive fire team. Yeah, and I didn't plan it this way, but um my uh, my Talon Flame was a girl, mm -hmm. like the one I used competitively, and like that's the one I got attached to because that was my Talon Flame. So yeah. if I have a boy Talonflame, despite Talonflame probably being, you know, traditionally, quote unquote, more masculine, I'm like, I mean, yeah, but that's not my Talonflame because my Talonflame yeah. was a girl. And I, yeah. and I don't think it's crazy because, like, you look at, like, animals and, you know, like birds or, you know, cats even because I feel like less so, less so than dogs like cats, you know, you really can't tell the gender of a cat just eyeballing it. They, it looks like a cat. I don't think They're, so, yeah. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> yeah. And so, but you know, it'll be like if someone had a cat and, you know, it looked like you'd be like, well, my cat's a girl. This is like, you know, and this is why I do these things based off of that. This yeah. cat's a boy. Despite yeah. the, despite it being literally to, to our human eye, yeah. you yeah. know, you can't tell. And it's just like, yeah, because it, it, there's a certain matter. So, you know, even outside of, like, quote-unquote gender stereotypes or norms, like, I feel like if a certain Pokemon you grew up was a certain way, or so, you know, like your Haunter, you know, you said, you know, my Haunter is just always this. And going forward, 
Because, you know, I guess in our mind, it's like, I'm not, I'm not acquiring a new Typhlosion. This is just yeah, the yeah. Typhlosion oh, yeah, I've, no. I've always had. Yeah, so, I, I don't have, because if that was the case, I'd have way too many Pikachu, right? But yeah. in my head, it's just the same Pikachu every game. Even though clearly, like, it's like, what are we at? Like, 12 games or something like that? You know, 15 games? I've had, like, a million Pikachu. You know, I, yeah. It's this, I, it's, it is absolutely the same one. Yeah. Now I have two Haunters, because I have a boy one that I keep catching. You know what I mean? And then yeah. the one girl one, right? Yeah. Um, and, and, yeah. uh. <laughs> and it's and it's funny because I, I think of so if Pokemon ever goes so imagine like if they do like minimal things right it goes Pokemon is either small medium or large and maybe there's like a shiny variant like an yeah. extra small or extra large but that's like you know equivalent of a shiny like super rare mm-hmm. and then they you take it one step further and it's like for certain Pokemon they can have like different eye colors or something if it's viable. So like cause mm-hmm. I always think about the Pokemon episode where they met the surfing Pikachu and he had blue eyes and I thought that was like the coolest thing ever. So could you I'm like imagine how it would get if you're like I have a small Rowlet with red eyes. I don't know if so, that would look good with a Rowlet. And like <laughs> I don't know if you knew this, but in Sword and Shield they have what's called marks. And marks go through if you have if you've beaten the game go back through your Pokemon that you've caught some of them might already have it it's like at the last like slide of your menu your summary screen and what they are are depending on how you caught the Pokemon sometimes they'll get like a little badge that kind of like adds like a little flair of personality it doesn't do anything except if you click it that will become the title of your Pokemon so. The, I didn't know these existed. I, I found out they existed the very first day, but I didn't know they existed until I uh, played the game after buying it. One of the Yamper I had, I don't know what the criteria was for getting this mark, but the the one I caught um, had like the hunger mark or something like that. Uh-huh. And if you click it, now every single time I send out my Yamper, his name becomes Yamper the Peckish, not just Yamper. So they do have that, like, one little extra, like, little bit of flair that you're talking about that adds, like, a, a little bit of uh, an, another layer that just affects nothing, right? Like, it doesn't make yeah. your Pokemon competitively viable or anything like that. It's just, like, a title to your Pokemon. Um, there's a way more. I don't. I can't think of literally any other ones. No, I remember um, uh, it, my friend told me about the marks, but I remember thinking, like, I'm not about to go look through but. I didn't know it actually changed the name. I thought it was like, you know, I, th- I thought it was akin to, you know, like when you read the description, it's like, oh, like spicy food takes a lot of yeah, gas. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. it has the nature and then like that added, uh, I thought it was like that. I thought it just, I didn't know it actually, yep. when you threw it them you, out. Uh, my Galarian Zapdos is like adamant or some sort of like the proud or something like that. It's like Galarian Zapdos, the proud go, you know, it's something like that. Yeah, and I think we need more of that. But, you know, more, you know, common, like, you know, maybe not every Pokemon gets a title, but that, that there's something to where where you can make it, you know, a way, a, a balanced way to where it's not like, okay, there's these are the three things and every Pokemon's these three things always. Yeah. But I, I have to, there has to be some algorithm where, you know, it spits out so many combinations that, you know, the chances of getting the same thing twice it's is been- like, yeah. Spinda, yeah. Uh, there's a game called Magikarp Jump, and they have the same thing about Spinda, but for Magikarp. Oh. And so they have all of these like koi, like the fish koi or whatever. It has all these like koi markings of Magikarp. So it's just like Spinda, maybe not that extreme, but like it's just like Spinda where there's a bunch of variations of Magikarp. Ow. Um, <laughs> sorry, I just smacked my table with my hand. Um, but. Yeah, that kind of thing I have wanted forever. I, I, you know, blue-eyed Pikachu or Pikachu with, like, the tuft of hair or, you know, uh, there's, like, a Pichu with, like, a notched ear or something like that. Or if you remember, it has, like, three yeah. little spikes at the end of its ear. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Love it. Hey, uh, I want more. Yeah, I mean, Pokemon were giving you the juice. Maybe you're already working on it. But like you <laughs> said, I think you used the best way to describe it, uh, which are, which are the Pixar analogy to where... It's three houses, but it feels like so much more. It's yeah. it's it's a finite number of things, clearly. 
Yeah. But it's done in such a way to where it just feels like so much more. And then, you know, because the way we already do, like, say, you know, boy, girl, this, that. If you just mm-hmm. add what's already on top of there, you know, we, you can literally create. I mean, God, I would have to trade up my Pokemon up so many times because once it gets to that level, it'd be like, OK, no, now I literally have this, you are my one this. Yes. Yeah. 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 Like you, yeah. you can't maybe maybe I would have to catch another one for like reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that would make not transferring your Pokemon over really hard, you know, where, oh, yeah. you know, if you have to, because I, I think games take a while to get the, the, what's it called, bank home home feature, right? Uh-huh. To like, know that you have, you know, Pikachu with blue eyes and a tuft hair, the perfect Pikachu, right? Locked away, and then you couldn't go on your journey and you had to catch a different Pikachu that looks like, you know, has purple eyes and a bowl cut, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. This isn't my peak. You couldn't do the whole like pretending it's the same Pokemon every time thing. Oh yeah, oh yeah, you couldn't. I mean, I'm yeah. uh, people. I'm not saying it's right or wrong here. I'm just saying it would be wild. It, it would probably destroy us in some way, shape, or form. <laughs> but uh, Taco, I want to thank you for joining me. And right before we do all the signing off, real quick, give me your top three best design Pokemon. I mean, it don't have necessarily be your favorite, but like you think this is just top tier Pokemon design. Okay, so the first two are not, I swear in my life, they are not compounds. Um, Pikachu, obviously, like, <laughs> duh, is number yeah. one. Number two, I'm sorry, it's very clearly Charizard. Like, <laughs> it, it is my second favorite Pokemon. I'm sorry, I'm very normal. <laughs> but it's, you know, clearly very well designed. Uh, third, huh. Third favorite Pokemon, or not our favorite design. Um, oh man, I have, I want to say maybe, I have no idea. I maybe not. Okay, this is this is a cop out. This is a cop out. Okay, <laughs> right. I can't, I can't think of what my third, the third best design Pokemon is, but it's something that shocked me like a f- couple days ago. Uh, Dialga. The, the 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 legendary of diamond of diamond not diamond and pearl the legendary of diamond um is this like brontosaurus looking dude and he's supposedly the the like the god of time right uh-huh. if you look him up i was playing legends um just a few days ago and i was like walking around this like 3d model of it um and i realized his tail has like the it's like fanned out. I'm trying to describe this for people listening. It's like fanned out um, to the point where it looks like uh, like a time dial, like a like a like a sundial, oh. right? Where I was like, what what aspect of his design is time based? And it took me a moment to realize if you combine his tail, which are kind of like the you know like noon, one o'clock, mm-hmm. two o'clock kind of thing, um, if you combine his tail with his head it creates a sundial. Wow. So if you Google a sundial, um, it has this, like, what looks like Dialga's head. Obviously, it's the other way around. They didn't base sundials off of Dialga, right? Um, if you look at the, the the dial part of the sundial, it looks like Dialga's head, and then the the timing, you know, like the one, two, three, four, five, and then, you know, 10 o'clock, whatever, the, 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 the different times are his tail. So then once you look at Dialga, and also his name is Dialga, Dial, Dialga, right? <laughs> Um, it should have been obvious, but I didn't know this until like, I didn't realize until this a few Bro, days ago. This is new information yeah. to me as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you look at him, he just looks like a like a sundial with you know brontosaurus legs. So there you go. That's a that is a very well designed Pokemon that I never realized until. Yeah, because he it's not like chandelier. Where we're like, oh yeah, clearly that's yeah, a yeah, chandelier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Duh. <laughs> you know that yeah, that's yeah. A, that's actually layers. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So hopefully that made up for thinking Pikachu and Charizard were really good designs. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. So so for mine, I'm going to go with a – first, I'm going to say Primarina. I think that's mm-hmm. one of the most well-designed final evolution forms. Like, it, it encompasses water and fairy very well. The fact that oh, it's yeah, a, yeah, yeah. yeah, the fact that it's a siren, Yeah, you know, that that's even more amazing. And, then, like, the hair, like, you know, when you see, like, how its hair goes up for, like, its special moves and things, mm-hmm. I was like – because it's cute, it makes mm-hmm. sense. It's not too on the nose. It's not like okay, we just make a siren a Pokemon. Like you know, it looks yeah. you know, it still has aspects of the seal. Like yeah. honestly, 
it took me a while to even get that it was a siren. You know what? It's mm-hmm. noise based moves. And so I was like, oh, it wasn't until I saw Oceanic Operetti or whatever, you know, it's special Z move that it like finally click. Mm-hmm. You know, it was kind of like yeah. Oshawat, like, you know, or, or Samawat. Like, I didn't get the samurai thing until I realized it had swords. Uh, swords, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, I, oh. Yep, yep, yep. I was like, I see it now. So, mm-hmm. but I think Primarina is just perfectly designed. And could be on land without a problem, so kudos to that. Yeah, it's not floating. <laughs> <laughs> um, then I'm going to go with um, uh, Braxton. I know some people say Braxton, Bryson or something. The middle, the of all form yeah. of Finnegan. So however you say yeah, it. Yeah. I say Braxton. I've heard it other ways, but that's what I say. That's the only way I've heard it, so, yeah. Yeah, so, okay, so, you know, clearly it's evolving into be a witch. Mm-hmm. Del Fox, we dropped the ball on that one, but... Braxton, I like, like, I like Del Fox. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do think Braxton's better. So I don't like his candle wax ear thing is going on. Like, I, I'm like, I'm just like, <laughs> I just want to, z- I'm like, what, what is, what is, <laughs> like, if it was actual flames, I think yeah, I would have yeah. been fine. But like, since it's like, her <laughs> out, it's, that's the only yeah. thing that, that ruins it for me. <laughs> but uh, Braxton, I feel like it's 10 out of 10 perfect. Like yeah, her stance, yeah. her design, the fact that she has a twig in her tail, you know, her twill is like, you know, like a bush and, and yeah. she ignites the, t- you know, the, the twig as she pulls it out as it rubs through her yeah. fur and then uses it as a makeshift wand. I'm just like, it isn't she like a broom tail too. Like, yeah. Off the top of my head. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. She has like a giant puffy broom tail thing going yeah. on. I think that's super cool. I, I mean, like there's a reason I said this to you before, but there's a reason she's like in Pokken and not. The other evolution. Well, I guess Fennekin's like a assist, but yeah. Um, but Del Fox is not in it in any way. Yes, yes. Yeah, and the Braxton fact is very good. Yes, and the fact that like when she's not using her wand, she kind of like twirls it and just like you know <laughs> like sword yeah. behind the back, sticks yeah. it back in her tail. I'm just yeah. like, oh, that 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 was. I remember thinking I was like, this is why Pokemon needed 3D models because those those are the details you miss with yeah. sprites. Yep, those are the things sprites cannot give you. The opposite of Typhlosion. <laughs> yeah. It's an improvement, you know? <laughs> As opposed to like, oh no, go back, you know? Yeah, so. completely. And this last one, it always surprises people when I say this. So I'm thinking to see if it surprised you. Min Shao. I don't know what it is about Min Shao, but I think there's... I, I just really like it. I, I can't really give you an yeah. a, a explanation. What is like, Min Shao? Is that the final or the not final? It's the final. It's the one with the, like the long sleeves. like. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's white. Did you, it got a mega evolution, right? I don't think did it. No, there's no way. Did it? I'm I'm gonna Google real quick if that's okay with you. Yes, please do. If it did, yeah. I'm I'm about to like go get sword and shield and be like, when did I miss this? Okay, 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 okay. I'm on Google Images and it says that I might be making this up. Did I make this up? Okay, because I was like, I gotta turn in my Pokemon Master badge if I'm wrong on this. <laughs> I'm not. I, I might be making this up. <laughs> I feel like I know, I think I have like a vague memory. Maybe I'm thinking of a different Pokemon, but um, no, Min Chao's awesome. Min Chao is like the, the sleeves I think are underrated because they're not sleeves, but we all know they're sleeves. Yeah. Right? It's like it's overgrown fur. But yep. Yeah. To, to me, because I feel like fighting Pokemon for the most part, just get like a generic, you know, I'm a fighting Pokemon. I'm wearing not karate stuff. You know, McChamp has not mm-hmm. a wrestling belt. You know, we get these very things. But Minshaw is like, okay, this is like, I think it's subtle. a fun, yeah, a subtle, fun yeah. fighting design, especially for a yeah. Pokemon type that I feel like, in terms of creativity, usually doesn't get a lot. Mm-hmm. There's also like a lot of rodent Pokemon. Or I don't know. If, I don't know if I don't know if it's like a weasel or whatever. Yeah, but I'm there's pretty, a lot of I'm like... sure it's a weasel. Yeah, there's a lot of competition to like differentiate that type of you know like that and that species, and I think Minshao stands apart. Still, you know, I feel like they all stand apart, but like it's got to be harder and harder to make a, a you know a rodent looking thing different, right? And I think they accomplished that. Yeah, and also I'm gonna give a special shout to Baractus. So. <laughs> And there's a reason I, I love Maractus now. I, I never really did. It was just like as a Maractus cactus, you know, mm-hmm. clever. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. No harm, no foul. It's a good Pokemon. And, but the reason I love it now is because um, 
you know, back when Sword and Shield was going on and the National Dex controversy was going on and all mm-hmm. that, that wubba bubba, there was a yeah. meme that my friend shared to me that was like, uh, it, it was the meme was basically saying like, stop crying. It was like all the Pokemon and you're upset that you, that your Maractus won't be in the new <laughs> yeah. game. That's like, that's what the meme said. And he shared it with yeah. me laugh. And so, you know, the, the tried and true day came where they finally showcased the first like Sword and Shield trailer proper. And what's the first Pokemon you see in that trailer is a dang Maractus. Yeah. Yeah. And like my friend texted me, was like, bro, please tell me you're watching the trailer now. And I was like, I am. I am. After sharing and laughing at that meme, yeah. the first Pokemon showcase is Maractus. And I was just yeah. like, incredible. You can't, you can't make it. I think it everyone was worried it was just going to be like the hit Pokemon, right? Yeah. Like it was, it was just going to be Charizards and Pikachus everywhere, right? Yeah, basically. But like, yeah, no, Maractus. Yeah. Coming in and being the hero. Coming in hot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and after the sword and shield, I mean, not sword and shield, after the uh, Owl of Armor and uh, Crown Tundra, like, it ended up being, what, like, 75% of the decks anyway, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I I don't think they, I think they were being honest. I think it's just, there is a lot of Pokemon, right? Yeah. Like, I think, you know, Digimon swaps out Digimon every game. Uh, it's just, you know. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll be all right. Yeah, yeah. We survived Legends, you know? Yeah. That was only 200 and something. And this, yeah. was, this Now, this was the game you wanted to see your favorite in. This, oh, yeah. But, you know. If but, anything, I'm just more excited to see who's in the next one, right? Yeah. I don't know if I would have ever thought Tangela was cool, as cool as I do now, if I didn't, <laughs> like, have to, like, you know, interact with Tangela as opposed to, um, you know, my... 17th Charizard, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I'm I officially hate Paris as a Pokemon. I've never had, I never, yeah, what is why yeah. did they do that? <laughs> yeah, like Paris is now on my hit list every game for it. I'm yeah. like, hope they cut Paris because never <laughs> that just trauma, yeah. I think like in the anime, he was like super, he didn't like know how to attack or something, yeah, and then he was they super timid and meek, li- yep. And now they just flipped that. They're like, no, there will be battles, I'm in. Where I think I'm battling one Pokemon, and then I'll notice there's like a an extra like little icon, and I'm like, oh, when did this bear show up? Like, where did you come from? Oh, they want all the smoke. They're just like human. No, they can't have none of that. No. <laughs> like I don't know what like human screwed over Paris in like the olden day, but yeah, yeah there, yeah. there must yeah. be like I don't know. But yeah, I'm looking forward to going forward. And, you know, I understand that we're never going to have the full decks ever again Mm -hmm. in a game. Maybe, like, a game that's not a mainline game. But, you know, we probably will. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, I I think we're at a point now, and I think uh, Legends proved this, where we don't need 50 to 100 new Pokemon each game. I Like, again, your analogy was too perfect. You know, if you design 10 to 15 really well-designed Pokemon and out of those 10 to 15, maybe five are just regional forms. Mm-hmm. I think that's all we would really need. Yep. I think curation feels really good, right? Like there are a million songs out there, but sometimes listening to someone's like, you know, not to date myself, but like <laughs> mixed, tape, right? Like, you know, like it's sometimes that's, it feels good, right? Like a soundtrack. When I was little, I used to love getting soundtracks, right? Where it's kind of like, or like those, what are they called? Like now 15 or whatever, yeah. right? Now that's what I used to love getting 25. those. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, the curation is just kind of like, it's not, it's not, I don't think it's better or worse. Like obviously having all Pokemon is good, like, right? But it's just a different kind of good, right? The curation of which Pokemon make it in and, and kind of you know like this game legends didn't like legends is a new isn't a new generation so of course there will be you know another 100 with a new generation but it was really perfectly fine to have what is it like five ten new pokemon in this game that were just really good you know yeah. i i liked them yeah it's uh just real quick uh Lilligant's my favorite grass type pokemon you yeah. know it just uh is i don't know why the new uh, one no, well, Lily get old like a uh, OG yeah. style. What, uh, whatever region she's home to. Yeah, was that is that is a not to spoil. I just realized um, that is one of the new ones, right? Yeah, Lily get. She has a regional form. Yes, 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 yes. And, uh, so- sorry, I didn't warn everyone before. I just shot that out there. You know, she's she's what the second boss, the second um. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. So I feel like that's that's you know 
that's that's fair. But uh, so since the league against one of my personal favorites, I was just like, oh no, Hussein form, Hussein. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know how to say I don't know. Name. I don't know. No one I haven't heard it out loud yet. I I mean if I have it's been, you know, since the first trailer or whatever. Yeah. I mixed it up. I just kept saying it different the entire time I was playing it. Yeah, so this region's form, I was like, oh no, I'm gonna hate it. Only because I already love the, the base form. Yeah. And then I was like, I love it. I love this one yeah. too. They did the impossible. Yeah, oh yeah. And I it, it, it and, has uh, like a almost like a Tinkerbell Peter Pan vibe to it. Yeah, uh, I remember my friend. I was like, I think it's grass fighting. Like before, like because we were at that point. So he's like, bro, it's clearly g- grass fairy. And I'm like, oh yeah, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. And then I called. I was like, ah, grass fighting. Nah, my instinct was right. But, <laughs> but now in my mind, I'm like, damn, grass fairy kind of would have made sense too, though. Yeah, grass fairy would have made a lot of sense. Is there a grass fairy? I think so. I think that mushroom Pokemon's a grass fairy. More, more red. I think you're correct. Yep, it's in the fairy forest or whatever. That yeah, makes sense. and Shinostic. Shin, Shintonic, Shintonic? Yeah. yeah. Again, the names, the names, the typings, the the stuff that comes easy to everyone else. That's where my brain just is like <laughs> I run out of in, I run out of space. But yeah, but hey, man, thank you for joining me this week. And real quick, talk of yeah. where can people keep up with you, see your work, support you, do all that good stuff. Uh, Taco on Twitter, T A H K zero is like the main place I'd say. Um, if you want to just hear me talk like this. Uh, Twitch, which is the same username. And then uh, eventually I'll make a YouTube video this year. You know, once a year, <laughs> I'll make a YouTube video. And then that's really it. Well, that's what's up, people. Make sure you go check that out. See his artwork. You know, do not share without his permission. <laughs> thanks. We, we will hunt <laughs> you down. <laughs> but uh, thanks, man. Thanks for having this Pokemon talk with me. As always, I'm Oda oh. Harmon Jr. You can find me that literally on any social media on the planet. But if you reach out to me on Twitter, as I always like to say, you talk, I'll talk back. Uh, you can always find the podcast at FC Podcast 23 on Twitter and on Instagram. And, of course, Full Circle Podcast, anywhere you get your podcast. And we're also up on YouTube, which I, I, I did a trial run. I stopped uploading the YouTube videos for like a month. And then people are like, it's not on YouTube no more. And I'm like, but no one listens to it there, but whatever. So, you know, I'm, I'm like, I'm, it, of course, oh. Shout out to the show. Apparently, we've hit like consistently uh, three thousand listeners a week on cool. Google Play for like long enough for it to like tell me like congratulations. So, for y'all awesome. listen, so y'all listen to it on Google Play. Appreciate y'all. <laughs> Apple Music, step your game up, and uh, iHeartRadio. iHeartRadio makes me pay for statistics, so I don't know. So shout out <laughs> to <just> I- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm like iHeartRadio <laughs> listeners. I mean. Shout out to y'all. I, I I I don't know how many of y'all are there. I might pay for it <laughs> later. Maybe like at the end of the year. But wherever you listen, thank you as always, everybody. Have a great week and be blessed. Bye.